Greetings. This recording covers the first part of the lesson on the basic terms in research and statistics. At the end of this lesson, you must have described basic terms in research and statistics. To ensure common understanding of the term research, let us consider the different definitions coming from certain authors. First is the definition from Comar in 2011. Research is one of the ways to find answers to questions in which the process being applied is, first, being undertaken within a framework of a set of philosophies, second, using procedures and methods and techniques that have been tested for their validity and reliability, and third, designed to be unbiased and objective. Another definition is from Wally Mann in 2011. Research is a very general term for an activity that involves finding out, in a more or less systematic way, things you did not know, which is about advancing the frontiers of knowledge. Third definition is from Creswell in 2012. Research is a process of steps used to collect and analyze information to increase our understanding of a topic or issue which generally consists of three steps. First, pose a question. Second, collect data to answer the question. And third, present an answer to the question. And the last definition that you are going to consider is from Rahasekhar, Philomenathan, and Chinathambi in 2013. I'm not actually sure if I was able to pronounce their names properly. According to them, research is a logical and systematic search for new and useful information on a particular topic, which is done with the help of study, experiment, observation, analysis, comparison, and reasoning. Take into consideration those definitions of research. The following activities may not be considered as research. First, finding the name of your crush. Second, browsing the web to find out how to pronounce a certain word. And third, using the map to find the location of a certain restaurant. Although those activities involve finding certain information as well as a process of how to obtain the said information, but the activity is not as rigorous as being defined here by the different authors. However, those activities may be considered as part of a certain research. Because of the vagueness of using the term research, to refer to a systematic way of finding answers to certain topic which eventually contribute in building knowledge, others opt to use the words research study or research project. Despite the efforts of several authors to clearly define research, this term is sometimes being used by other people to refer to a particular research method only. Again, language is dynamic. For you to be able to understand how it is being used by other people, you may need to consider the context. Moving on to the next terminology is the types of research. For this one, there are also many variations. First, is that from Komar. Komar described types of research from three perspectives, namely application, objectives, and inquiry mode. In terms of application, a research could either be pure or applied. On the one hand, pure is also referred to as fundamental or basic, involves development and testing of theories and hypotheses. On the other hand, applied utilizes the knowledge obtained from other researches, usually which are from pure research. 
As objectives, descriptive defines or describes certain situation, phenomenon, variables, or the like. Correlational identifies the association or relationship between or among situations, variables, and the like. Explanatory clarifies the why and how of certain relationship or establishes cause and effect relationships that allow generalizations, while exploratory explores or investigates certain area or subject that is not yet well known. Examples include a feasibility and pilot study. With regards to inquiry mode, quantitative research is associated to structured approach, while qualitative is associated to unstructured approach. Moreover, quantitative research deals with phenomenon through quantitative data, while qualitative considers qualitative data with linguistic semiotic basis. Another is from the blog posted by Discover PhDs. The author clarifies types of research according to the following eight perspectives. Its purpose, depth of scope, type of data used, degree of variable manipulation, type of inference, time it is carried out, sources of information, and how data are obtained. The first three perspectives are the same as those of Komar. However, the term theoretical is used instead of pure. For the degree of variable manipulation, experimental research involves manipulation of variables under strictly controlled conditions. Non-experimental, also referred as observational study, considers the natural context to analyze certain phenomenon, while quasi-experimental is somehow experimental since it only controls some variables under investigation. With regards to the type of inference, in deductive, general laws pointing to certain conclusions are used to explain the reality. In inductive research, generalization or development of new theories is achieved from observations, while in hypothetical deductive, hypothesis is based on the observation of reality and that conclusion is obtained by using deduction which is verified or rejected through experience. As to the time research is carried out, longitudinal, also called as diachronic, involves a defined period of time to track changes in variables, while cross-sessional, also called as synchronous, limits at a given time to observe certain phenomenon. In terms of the sources of information, on the one hand, Primary research utilizes primary or first-hand data, which means they are obtained directly from the sources. On the other hand, secondary research utilizes data from other researches, which means information obtained from secondary sources. Lastly, on the types of research according to how data are obtained, documentary, also referred to as secondary sources, uses existing sources of information. Field utilizes the location of the phenomenon in collecting information. Laboratory involves the use of controlled environment, while mixed method involves a combination of the previously mentioned types of research. There are still other ways on how research is classified. Do not be surprised because they may also be based on research. Moving on is the research design term. The following definitions were taken from Cohen, Manion, and Morrison. According to them, research design refers to the plan for and foundation of approaching, operationalizing, and investigating the research problem or issue. Research design involves setting out the approach, theory or theories, and methodology or methodologies to be employed. Research design includes the types of data required, how they will be collected, which means the instrumentation, and from whom, which refers to the population and or sample. Research design covers how the data will be analyzed, interpreted, and reported. Research design means the warrants to be 
adduced to defend the conclusions drawn and the degree of trust that can be placed in the validity and reliability of each element of the research. And research design is the sequence of the research. For Livy, there are five approaches to research design. First, quantitative research is characterized by deductive approaches to the research process aimed at proving, disproving, or lending credence to existing theories. Second, qualitative research. It is generally characterized by inductive approaches to knowledge building aimed at generating meaning. Third, mixed methods research. It involves collecting, analyzing, and in some way integrating both quantitative and qualitative data in a single project. Fourth, arts-based research. It involves adapting the tenets of the creative arts in a social research project. And fifth, community-based participatory research. It involves collaborative partnerships between researchers and non-academic stakeholders. Looking back at the aforesaid types of research, these approaches are seem another perspective of classifying a research. This ends the first part of the lesson. Another recording will cover the remaining part.